Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Claire Varesio. I'm the community librarian at Cupertino Library. Thank you so much for joining us for today's wellness program. Our wellness series is sponsored by Cupertino Library Foundation. They very generously have supported this series for the past several years. And if you would like to learn more about what they do and their advocacy for our library, you can visit their website at cupertinolibraryfoundation.org to learn more. I want to welcome Dr. Wen today. Dr. Andrew Wen has given many talks in the Cupertino community and is himself from Cupertino. And his talk today, I think, will be very interesting and hopefully very applicable to your lives. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Wen. Thank you. Hi. Can you guys hear me OK? All right. So my name is Dr. Andy Wen. Thank you, Claire, for hosting this. And I, you know, I, I think uh, I just wanted to take a pause and let you guys know that there are not that many communities that do this kind of stuff. Um, I've given talks sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce and, uh, and this one is from the library. Um, and it's pretty cool that your city is investing back into you guys uh, and wanting to invest into the community. And, and it's not something that I see all the time, so it's really pretty cool. Um, what, let me just introduce myself a little bit, and uh, I'm not sure if this remote works, so I might go back and forth. And uh, so, I uh, just from background, I am a child of immigrants, and I was made in America. So I was the first one born in my family in the United States. My family came from China. Um, I went to Limbrook High School uh, a long, long time ago. And, uh, and then from Limbrook, I went to UC San Diego. And then from UC San Diego, where I studied biochemistry and cell biology, I went to UCLA for the School of Medicine. So that was four years there. And then from UCLA, I went to Children's Hospital Oakland, which is now merged with UCSF. And then after three years of that, I went to Children's Hospital Los Angeles uh, where I did another three years of my postgraduate fellowship in lung diseases. And after that, uh, I worked at Children's Hospital Oakland and California Pacific Medical Center. And uh, over the last 15 years, I've been working at Kaiser Permanente at uh, Kaiser Oakland. And over the last 10 years, I've been um, a department head of a large group of pediatric specialists. We have 11 specialties. And, uh, and one of uh, our guests today asked me, how did I become interested in this kind of topic? Some of it is how I'm wired, and we're gonna, uh, I think it'll be pretty easy for you to figure out which personality or which social group type I am. Um, and our type sort of likes this stuff. And then the other part is because I'm managing a bunch of people and I'm taking care of patients from all over the world and I need to understand how they hear things and how they like to be uh, uh, spoken to, how they like information delivered to them. And so I'm constantly uh, adjusting my style to fit the person that I'm talking with. Uh, I think uh, being married, I've been married since 92. And so any of you in a long-term relationship understand that you better figure each other out or there's more friction. Uh, my wife and I also have four children, and they're their own human beings. They're not children anymore. I'll show you some pictures of them uh, in a second. This is a picture of my parents uh, when, we, uh, when I was a baby. Um, and uh, part of the reason I put these pictures up is to prove that I am Chinese. A lot of Chinese look at me and they go, there's no way that guy's Chinese. Uh, but I am Chinese, and uh, those are my parents. Uh, these are my parents when they uh, were young in China and new immigrants. So the top right-hand corner is my mother when she was a teenager in China. And then uh, both of my parents uh, came to the United States in the early 60s uh, after living in Taiwan for many years. And then um, they had three children outside of the United States. And then, surprise, Andy Wen showed up. And uh, I really wasn't surprised. And then uh, we grew up here. And so I grew up in the San Jose, Santa Clara County area since, uh, I think we moved here in 1966 uh, when I was two years old. 
and uh, like, like uh, Claire said, I, I went to Limbrick High School. Um, this is my family. My wife uh, is, grew up in Taiwan, and uh, we have four children who are now four young adults, and so they have their own social styles or personality types, which uh, every time my wife Margaret and I speak with them, Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's a little hard, sometimes it's a little challenging, and we're constantly trying to figure out what are we doing well and what are we not doing well. Um, and hopefully they're, they're doing that too. So we've been really, really blessed. Um, my biggest influences are being the child of an immigrant from China because uh, even though I don't look Chinese, even my wife's parents said, Margaret, is that guy Chinese? Uh, they it was when I grew up here there were very few immigrants believe it or not and I was told all the time from my parents you are Chinese you are Chinese your family comes from China um, and it wasn't until I was an adult when I uh, in medical school when I was uh, I went to a protest uh, against Tiananmen Square the massacre in Tiananmen Square there was a candlelight vigil and I said I want to be with my people they're, they're protesting what's going on in China. So I went to be with my people, and my people looked at me like, who's the white guy? Who's that American guy? Because they did not recognize me as being uh, that uh, Chinese. But, but, it, but just being a child of immigrant is such a, um, such a strong influence uh, for my upbringing. Growing up in America, becoming a doctor, being a doctor trains trained me in a certain way, uh, being a department chief, trying to uh, help other doctors who are super, super smart understand that there might be different ways to do things. That's sort of challenging. Uh, I, uh, marriage and parenthood has been a big influence. Uh, uh, my wife and I are both Christians, and that's been a big influence. And then learning from my mistakes. So I was telling these guys here that Every time I give this talk, I'm always learning. And the reason I say this kind of stuff is, this is a journey. We're, I'm just giving you some information today, and you know, some of it you'll say, oh, that's pretty good. And some of you go, well, I don't really need to know that. But maybe the next speaker in the wellness series will come up with something else and go, oh, that, that resonates with me. So this is always a journey that we're on to try and make things better. I'm giving this picture about alignment. If you look at the picture on the far side, the big arrow is not going very far. It's a short arrow. And why is it short? Because people, all the little arrows are going in different directions. So how many of you guys have worked in a group where people did not agree with one another? All, right? And it can be very frustrating because you're spending more time trying to figure each other out. You're trying to figure out how to work together toward a common goal and you, some, you don't get very far sometimes. Well, then you have the other green arrow where the arrow is going long and going far and hopefully it's because all the people in that team are working really well together. They don't have to be all the same we don't want a bunch of robots being the same, but we want people coming together so that they work well together. This is a, another famous story or proverb about a bunch of blindfolded people who are touching an elephant, and they all have different parts of the elephant, and so the person touching the leg says, oh, this feels like a tree. And the person touching the tusk says, oh, this is a spear. The person touching the ear might say, oh, this is a big fan. Or, oh, this elephant trunk is a big hose, but they don't know that they're touching an elephant. It's because they all see different parts or they all feel different parts of the elephant without getting the big picture. And one of the things we're gonna talk about in social styles is how can we see things that we normally don't see? How can we see beyond our personality type or our social style and get the bigger picture? Okay, so my, I've actually already told you what my social style is in all of these slides. All for one, one for all, out of many, we are one, uh, respecting other people, 
different personalities. I've already told you what my personality style is. Yes. Amiable. Oh, she, you're ready to give the talk. So, and, and thank you for saying that. So this talk, you know, we only have about 45 minutes and then we're going to have more time for question and answer. So this is a very simplified talk. You could spend weeks, hours, months, years studying the Myers-Briggs personality types. Uh, there's all these different things. We're just going to do a very simple version. It's not perfect because it's made to be simple, but it's going to be made so that you guys will have something that you can take home. Okay, so we're going to talk about social styles. Some people call it personality types. In this talk, I'm going to call it social styles, meaning how you interact with people. And we're going to talk about how you can easily figure out who you are. And we're going to talk about how you can work better with other people. And we're going to review how some of these interactions can be good and some of these can be not so good, but it can be made better. Um, I want you guys to be able to understand more about yourself and I want you to learn how your style shapes a lot of your interactions, both good and bad. Okay, if you want more information, uh, there's the flyer that has more information and uh, the blue one is just some of the stuff that is on my slides. And then, um, Claire, you said you had another uh, half sheet, right? So that's good. The way this talk is, um, is set up is a lot like the top uh, uh, speakers, uh, Foster and Hicks. I went and saw their talk, I talked to them about it, and they just had it organized really nice and cleanly, and I asked them permission if I could repeat it, and they said, Andy, tell whoever you want. Um, there's websites called, six, this, these are two, truity.com and 16personalities.com. You can go there, take a questionnaire, it takes about five minutes, and they'll tell you about your Myers-Briggs, they'll tell you what your strengths are, what kind of people you get along with, what kind of people you don't get along with, what kind of uh, jobs are good for you, uh, and what kind of jobs make you angry and frustrated and just not happy. Um, so those are pretty good. Okay, so social styles have a very predictable pattern. Um, all styles, can be successful. So sometimes people go, well, I don't want to go to, I don't want to be that style because that style's the failure. I want to be this style because those styles are the success stories. That's actually not true. All of these styles can be strong and successful and be get along with people. It's, it's just more, this, today we're not talking one is better or one is worse. We're just talking about how can we uh, put it together and make things better. Um, and everybody has a range. Sometimes people say, you're always this. You're just like that. You never change. In reality, no one is just one. And even though I'm going to emphasize like a four box uh, grid, nobody is just one box. It's usually you're in between this and in between that. Um, and everyone has some ability to be flexible. So in this situation, I'm going to be like this, and maybe I'm going to learn to be like that because that will help me be more successful. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of moving, okay? So that way you guys can stay awake. I'm going to read off stuff, and then the first group, I would like to come and stand over here, and then the second group, I want you to come and stand over here, and then the third group over here and the fourth group over here. And this is just so that we can think and be more awake and not fall asleep and, and actually meet people who are just like you, okay? So the first group is this. And if you feel like this is how you, you're wired, go over there, okay? And you can move around. If you change your mind later, you can move around, okay? I am task oriented. I like to check off boxes. I like to keep things organized. I am very work oriented. I like to get the job done. I am, I value thinking about things and I value being very accurate. I desire respect and appreciation for my time and my effort and preparation and expertise. I'm not comfortable with change. I seek, I look for things to be secure. I like things to be stable. 
I like time to think things through. Please don't rush me. I like to make cautious decisions. I don't like to make rush decisions. I like a formal and very structured approach. I like clear and logical procedures. I'm irritated when things are sort of ambiguous and unclear. I like organization and structure in my day, in my work, in, in my life. Um, I prefer to work alone and slowly. I just want to get things done in the right way at the right time. Don't rush me. I like detail and I like precision. And as much data as evidence that I can get, the more I can get so I can make a good decision, the happier I am. I am very good at problem solving. If you want something to get done, I will get it done for you and I'll probably get it done better than you thought I could do it or anybody could do it, okay? Is anybody like that, an analytical? Okay, come over here. Analytical people, come over here. Thank you, okay. Analytical people over there. And if you guys change your mind, you can move, okay? All right. So analytical people in some uh, groups, they call these the owls or the beavers. It's a little bit of both. So the owl has these big eyes and is thought to be very wise and is always looking around, very careful, but also they get stuff done. Beavers are the ones who are cleaning out the rivers, they're building. If you mess up their dam, they want to rebuild it. They like things nice and neat and they put things together and they just work and work and work and work. Very hard working. All right. So analyticals over there. Thank you. Okay, the next group are the drivers. I am results oriented. I value action, I value results, and I value control. I want others to support me because I'm the one who knows what's going on. I'm the leader, I'm the boss. Uh, I enjoy solving problems, but sort of like having other people do some of those uh, solving problems. I like a lot of freedom. I do not like to be told what to do. I have a low tolerance for people giving me advice. I like firm, decisive action. I hate it when people cannot make a decision. Uh, I like my professional life to be very business-like, very uh, clear, very professional. Um, I, uh, I like effective problem solving, meaning I like things to get done. I like a fast and efficient use of time. I like to work quickly and I do things very well. I'm also very much of a self person. I get things done well with myself. Um, my favorite communication style is to start at the bottom line. Just get to the point. I don't want to hear a lot of fluffy stuff. Just tell me what you need and I'll get it done. I like to focus on facts. I don't like all this story stuff. I don't like made up stuff. I want your conversation with me to be very clear, very direct and efficient and brief. Don't use, don't waste my time. Uh, I am very much results oriented and I like a clear understanding of what's good and what's bad. Just give me the short, succinct answer. Does anybody feel like that's their personality? Yeah? You can move over here. Or you, could, you might be in between. Like you might be both analytical and... Yeah, yeah, whatever. This is just to help us think, yeah. Um, so this group is the driver, the lion. They run companies, Larry Ellison, Steve Jobs, <laughs> yeah, bossing people around. Yeah. That's okay too. And that might you might be an analytical who likes a lot of information, right? And that's okay. That's all right. Um, okay, the next type is amiable or likable. We're very people oriented. We value relationship and harmony. We don't like it when there's friction in the room. We seek approval and support for our fe feelings. We like to take slower action when we make decisions. 
But that's not because we don't like to make decisions. It's because we like harmony in the room. If you go too fast, the amiables are worried that somebody's going to get mad or get upset. Um, we dislike interpersonal conflict. We are non-confrontational. We are challenged by setting goals and at self-direction. The reason we have a hard time setting goals and getting things done, again, it's because we're so relational that we want everybody to get there together. We want, if we're in a group of 1,000, we want all 1,000 to get there together. Um, we will ask other people for their input. Um, the drivers don't ask very well. They already know what they want. They know that, and then the, the um, analyticals, the, they're, they, they like information. They think that they know already. Um, we will ask about the impact. How is this going to impact you? Uh, we will work slowly, but we will emphasize cohesiveness and collaboration. Our favorite communication style is warm and friendly. We are open and honest. We love lots of active listening. Amiables are very good at listening. Uh, our favorite relationships are close. They're warm. They're friendly. They're open and honest. We like deep relationships. We do not like the superficial relationships. We like to get to know people on a deeper level. And we do a lot of active listening and cohesive and collaboration. So this type is the golden retriever. Hey, master, throw the ball to me and I'll go chase the ball. <laughs> right? Or in the sea world, the dolphins swim in pods. Dolphins are very social sea animals. They don't, they're not alone. Um, so who are the amiables in the room? Oh wait, come on. Only one amiable in the whole room? Okay, we'll keep going, okay? And remember, none of these are good or bad. They're just different. And then by looking at it, we're gonna talk about what is what do you guys feel is okay? You can come up here. It's all right. Okay, expressive. This is the last one. Expressives like spontaneity. They like, hey, let's do this action. Hey, let's do this decision. And they like to be recognized for what they've done. Uh, they like to be acknowledged. They like their thoughts and their feelings to be represented, like you hear me, you get me. Uh, they like things to be fun. They like things to be new. They like things to be creative. They like things to be very flexible. They do not like to be locked in. Um, they like discussions that keep moving. Movement, dynamic. Things, I don't like things like, like the analyticals want stability and they want time to think. The, the expressive people, they want to go fast. Um, they tend to focus on the big picture um, because they're dreamers. They say, oh, let's fix this. Oh, let's, let's uh, fix climate change. Oh, let's fix uh, the roads. Oh, let's fix the school system. And they have a harder time with details. They tend to have a hard time implementing and operationalizing how we're going to get things done. Um, they sometimes over-exaggerate because they're so expressive. They say, oh, this is going to be great, and it's going to be so easy, and we're going to make a lot of money, and blah, 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 blah. Um, they dream big. They're also able to in inspire other people to dream. Um, they have very good persuasive skills, and they like to jump from activity to activity because they get bored. Um, they like um, things that help their self-esteem, and they also like to have a sense of belonging. They don't, if you're an inspirational person, you don't want to be alone, right? You need people around you that sort of feed into that uh, sense of feeling important. Um, they have a high involvement with other people. They enjoy compliments, positive statements. So if you're managing somebody who is an expressive or working with somebody with an expressive, they need the feedback that says, wow, that was a great job. Oh, that was a great idea. Oh, my goodness, I can see how you really thought about, you know, how this is changing uh, things, how it's going to be made better. They want to be known and they want to be understood. 
So they spend a lot of time saying, well, this is what I was thinking, and this is it, blah, 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 because they, they are expressing themselves, and they need somebody else to say, oh, I understand you, I hear you. Um, they also are very collaborative, and they tend to use testimonials as evidence. For these guys, the analyticals, if you said, well, I heard a story about this and this and this, and that's why th this project is going to work, you guys are going to show me the data. I need to see the spreadsheet. I need to validate the data. Like a story is not data, right? For these guys, the expressives, they sort of live for stories. Okay? So these guys in the animal world are the playful sea otters. They um, like to, I don't know if you guys have been to the Monterey Bay Aquarium. All they do is play all the time, right? Uh, they don't build dams the way the beavers do. They like to play around. Um, so they're very expressive, okay? So is anybody an expressive? You're an expressive also. Wow. That actually, in many ways, if you have a lot of different things, that gives you high flexibility. You want to do the microphone? I have a lot of, uh, I, I have a lot of activities. Yeah. But tend to be very entrepreneurial activities. Oh, okay. Try to lead people. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so what you're talking about is like if you have some driver and you have some uh, analytical and you have some collaborative personality and you're very expressive, that gives you a lot of flexibility because depending on who you're talking to, you can reach them in a way that they need to be reached, right? Whereas, you know, some people like the expressive doesn't want to hear about spreadsheets, right? So um, the people who are analytical who want to reach the other side of the room, they need to learn to express their, their, their story, yeah. Uh, I, I typically is uh, getting them to do stuff I can do, but i um, not good at small talk. You're not good at small talk, okay. All right, well, we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, okay, so are you guys, thinking about who you are, or you're not sure who you are, or... So you are a... I think I'm in between. A in-between, okay. How about you guys? Do you guys know who you are? Yes? Uh, we're comfortable just taking in the information from where, where we are. I uh, kind of relate to what this gentleman was saying, much as I identify with characteristics from every one of the quadrants that you have been discussing. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you guys can sit down. You can go back. But I was going to ask you, some people, if you felt comfortable to share a little bit more. Um, so think about in your life, who is in your group and who's not in your group? Like when you guys are at work or you're talking to your parents or you're talking to your kids or you're talking to people in your neighborhood, you can start to think about who are they in this very simple format. Are they analytical? Are they expressive? Are they lions? Are they golden retrievers? And it might help you start thinking about like, oh, no wonder I always don't get along with them. Or, oh, this is why I get along with them really, really well, right? Um, so, I'm going to ask you guys, it sounds like, it seems like you guys are a little shy, but that's okay. That's all right. Um, does anybody want to put out some things that they feel like works well for them? Like, what's your style strength? Um, what is your style's challenge or weakness or opportunity for change? Um, what kind of things do other people, what, what things should other people know about your style? And... Uh, what could you do that will help you work better with other people? And what could others do better to work with you? Does anybody want to share anything about their personality type? Ah, okay. Yeah. Hey, can you go to the mic? My friend, the microphone. So um, I, I was one of those people who felt like I was a little bit of everything. Uh-huh. And... Um, so, so when you ask me what my style strength is, I depends on the day and the, right. the, even the city I'm in. Mm -hmm. And um, 
Well, for the challenge, I what was funny is the the style that was the least resonant with me was mm -hmm. the driver. The driver. Uh, whenever I find myself in a, a point of stagnation, uh, I often will take charge, but I deeply, deeply resent it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but then there was one line in that description that was so true for me, which is I hate unsolicited advice. Mm. I feel so disrespected by it. Right. Um, and I don't know how much of that is cultural, but it's definitely it shapes how I right. interact with people. Right. And, and I think the, the cultural word is very strong because some of our cultures are, we're trained, do not do this. Yeah. Do not say this. Yeah. Always say thank you. Always say please. Don't cause trouble. In, you know, in some cultures, that's very strong. And in some cultures, it's like, you need to break the box you know, break out, don't be like everybody else. And you can see how that can influence your social style. Some of this, uh, we're, we're not going to talk about this except to say that some of this is what we're born with and some of this is how we're trained. So environment versus genetic, right? Is there anything that you would say that people should know about your style? The advice part. <laughs> don't give me advice. Yeah. And, and maybe that, um, I, when I first saw your grid, I thought I was in between amiable and analytical Okay. because I value spreadsheets, but, um, I need some sort of felt sense around that or, uh, uh -huh. an intuition around it. But, um, the expressive side really also, um, I think the fact that they really like belonging, um, and that they, uh, they're very enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. I was actually once asked to describe my personality through like an animal and I chose the dolphin. Oh, okay. <laughs> so then, yeah, that's, so I guess in terms of what people should know to work better with me, don't give me advice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Anybody else want to share? Sir. I don't, I don't know if it fits, but in general, I would like to um, acquire other um, characteristics while keeping some of my own. Mm -hmm. And uh, I made an interesting exercise of checking off my own characteristics and those of my wife as to, you know, who we should marry. And uh, in our case, where there's no common, we between us, we cover a lot of the page. Uh -huh. <laughs> and... Uh, I'll, um, as far as changing, um, I'll claim one success, and that is the uh, accommodation of ambiguity. Mm -hmm. I think I was very averse to ambiguity, and now I'm coming to appreciate it and even consider yeah. it reality and yeah. uh, uh, go through it. So thanks. So thanks. I think you know, like it's interesting that we change over the course of our lives and in our situations. So somebody who may have been 20 years old, who was like, this is the only way, this is the right way, may as an older person say, you know, there's more gray than black and white. Yeah. I'd like to uh, make another point. Um, a long time ago, I engaged in a, um, it was a seminar or a period at um, De Anza College that mm -hmm. involved a Fire OB. I don't know, it seems like this is uh, somewhat based on that. Mm -hmm. is, if that's uh, yeah it's similar right and um so the other way to look at this thank you so much you know so one of the things that you said is like between you and your wife you guys cover a lot of stuff and that that is what um people who try and build healthy teams would say you you actually need all of these features on your team so if you put a bunch of amiable golden retrievers and you put them in a situation where they need to make a decision, they're so worried about cohesiveness, this is just you know an extreme, but they might be so worried about cohesiveness that they can't make a decision, okay? And then you put a bunch of bossy lions in the room, so they're all lions, there's no followers in the group. Well, who makes the decision in that situation? And who's gonna follow the lion if none of them are followers? They're all alpha, they're all alpha personalities. If you put a bunch of analyticals together 
and they um, you know the stereotype is that they're they're so focused on their data and on their tasks that they're not good about um, thinking about the relationships that people have like how do you what's the relationship of the team to move forward and um, let me see expressive lion amiable did I cover everybody I think so 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 you need you need a team that's that's very well rounded um, so this is the, the grid, and um, when I put this grid together, it, it, I thought it was interesting. So the task-driven people tend to be the analyticals and the drivers. So the top square, uh, the top two squares tend to be analytical and drivers, and they, they like, like to get stuff done. Um, the people-driven are the expressives and the amiables, right? How are we doing as a group? Hey, let's check in. Um, the ask directed people who will ask questions. The people who want data are basically asking questions, but they're asking questions about the information. They, they're asking data. Um, but the amiable is asking people questions. Hey, how are you doing? Are you okay? And then the tell directed people who like to tell other people what to do uh, tend to be the drivers the bossier people, the leaders, the take charge people, and then the expressive people like, yeah, this is gonna be great. Those are telling me, they're telling you it's gonna be great. Um, so here are some style strengths, and I think some of this is on your sheet. So the drivers, they like competency, they like things to be organized, they like data, they do like data, uh, they like the tasks, they're very objective, they're very precise, they're thorough, and they're controlled, and they're rational. Uh, I'm sorry, that's the analytical people. Uh, the drivers, uh, the, an the lion people, um, they like control, they like results, they like to influence other people, they, like, uh, they can be tough sometimes, they can be very direct, they can be very efficient, uh, they can be controlled, or controlling, uh, and they can be very decisive. Uh, the golden retrievers, their driver is connection. I want to relate to people. Are people doing okay? I'm gonna support other people. I'm gonna empathize with other people. I'm gonna value loyalty, and I'm going to be very relational. The expressives are into the experience. Is this a good experience for my team? Are we experiencing joy? Are we? experiencing passion for our project. Is it creative? Is it enthusiastic? Are we having fun? Uh, is it energetic? They tend to be the people who will promote ideas, promote a project. Um, style gaps. The analytical people tend to be slower because they don't want to make a mistake. They can be overcautious. They can be indecisive. They might be inflexible. No, the data doesn't say that. I'm not moving. I'm, we're not doing this, right? They can be stubborn about it. Um, they might be not friendly. Other people sometimes think they're not friendly. They think they're cold. And it's not that they're cold. It's that they're so focused on the information that they're not really thinking about relationships. They can be picky about things because they see the, this data and this data don't really fit. Um, they can be seen as rigid sometimes because they're so focused on the information, okay? And they're not able to see, they're, they have a harder time seeing the bigger picture at times. Um, the lion can be, this is the gaps. These are things that they're not very good at. The lion sometimes might be autocratic, bossy, overbearing, not sensitive to other people's needs, not patient. Uh, they might put pressure on other people. Uh, they might be seen as ruthless. They might be dominating, okay? This is a lion, right? Uh, a golden retriever, their weakness or gap might be that they're overly compliant. You know what, sure, if you wanna do that, yeah, okay, let's do that, because they're worried about confrontation. They don't like confrontation and they're worried that if I fight back then that might cause tension in the group. Um, they 
can be seen as a pushover or a follower, a great follower, but not a great leader. Uh, Self-sacrificing. They might be seen as being too passive, too soft, hesitating, not results-oriented, which is true. They're not results-oriented. They're actually people-oriented. The expressive people might be seen as too excitable, high-strung, emotional, a loose cannon. They just say what they think, and they don't think about things before they say things. They might say things in broad, big picture, but they're not good at giving you details, right? They go, oh yeah, that's a great idea, but what about this and what about that? They, have, they don't naturally think about those things. Uh, they might be overcommitted because they make commitments to all these great projects and they're not very focused. And the communication styles, the analytical people are very fact-driven and very detail-driven. The lions, they want it direct, they want it blunt, and they can be bossy. Um, the golden retrievers, they're constantly asking soft questions. Are you okay? How do you feel about this? What's going on? You know, you seem a little tense or frustrated. Um, they listen very well. Maybe they don't share their own feelings very well, but they're very good at listening. And then the expressive people are enthusiastic and inspirational. So you can see that if you're running a company or a social group or a neighborhood or a large family, you can see how there's areas where these personalities will come into tension. At the same time, you can see how you can form a really great team if you have the right number and the right fit of everybody. The other thing to think about is if you have an analytical and you put them into a position where they're forced to make very quick decisions, that's their worst nightmare. That's their worst nightmare because they feel like, well, that's what expressives do. That's what lions do. I need time to think about things, to process things, because I want to make sure we make the right decision, right? If you tell a lion, go slow. This project is going to be a four-year project. You know, the lion's like, are you kidding me? I could do this in three days. And you're forcing me to drag it out. That makes them very frustrated. And like you said, don't tell me what to do, right? The lions don't like to be told what to do. And the amiables, if you told the amiables, say, I want you to get this project done, and I don't care who you lose in this, on your team. Like, I want you to be ruthless. The most important thing is to get the project done, and if everybody gets fired, I don't care. Or if everybody gets depressed, I don't care. That's a horrible place to be an amiable. And then the expressive is to say, you know what? Congratulations, you have one project to focus on. Just one for the next four years. I don't want you to bounce around and I'm going to put you in an office by yourself. <laughs> There's no people around you, right? That makes them upset. It makes them sad and depressed. So everybody, you know, this is how we all interact. Um, the, the people, let me see. Uh, now, sometimes what happens is when people get stressed, they respond differently. So people who are um, analytical, when they get stressed, they sometimes withdraw, they become more quiet sometimes, and then they tend to avoid things. Drivers will become more lions, they'll become more uh, bossy, more take over, more take charge, because that's where they want to be. The amiable golden retriever might be deferential. They might say, okay, okay, I get it, for the good of the team, I don't really agree with this, but we're all going to get along, right? Um, and then the expressives, uh, they may, if they're under pressure, they may actually attack because they're expressing their stress and their pressure. This, isn't, this is like a very general thing. There's actually some, uh, you could go to a different class where they test your personality and it could be like you're a super bossy person day to day, but then the way you respond to stress is you actually quiet down. Or a very quiet person, 
You say, oh, when they get stressed, they'll still be quiet because they're always quiet. But it turns out they're, they become lions when they, when they get stressed out. So how do you help them? So let's say you're working with these people in your life. Now that you know what works for them and what doesn't work for them, you can think about how do you help these people. So if you're trying to help a, a beaver, an analytical beaver, talk logically with them. Don't give them a bunch of stories and don't boss them around. So you might need, like if you're working on a project, you might say, hi, analytical group, um, we have a project coming up. I'm going to make sure you got great information and I'm going to make sure you have time to process that information. We do need you to finish your anal analysis. Like I can't have your analysis go on and on because we need to get this project done. But don't worry, you're going to have plenty of time to process the data you need and I really want to make sure I hear what you're saying because you guys are the problem solvers and you guys are going to figure out what's wrong with my idea. Right? So that will make them happy. Give them time, give them a deadline so it doesn't go analysis forever. A lion, um, you want them to, if they're feeling stressed, they need, they like to tell people what to do. They're the king of the jungle. So you need to give them a chance to say, okay, can you tell me what is it that you're feeling? What is it that you're concerned about? Or what's your idea? Okay, and they want respect, right? Um, give them an option. They don't want to be boxed in, right? Because they're the king of the jungle. Okay, we're going in this direction. I know you're getting mad, you're getting upset. What would you like to do? Or, oh, here's three ways we can get there. Why don't you pick out of those three ways? I'm not telling you exactly what to do. Um, I, want, uh, I want you, lion, you know that we need to get here. You give me the timeline. So the lion gets to be a lion. Give me the timeline that you think we should get this stuff done to get there, right? Um, amiables and golden retrievers, ask them open-ended questions. Hey, how are you doing? How do you feel? How do you think the group is doing? Do you think we're going too fast? Do you think we're going too slow? Um, ask them about their concerns and give them a chance to voice their disagreement so that they don't feel so shut down. Um, expressives, they need a chance to express their feelings. So have you guys ever been in a work meeting where people, they, they need to sort of shout and be angry or be upset and then they feel a lot better? Has that ever happened in your life? Sometimes, right? So the expressives need a chance to express um, and they need help separating their emotions from the facts. So they might be really frustrated about something, but they might need help from the analyticals to say, you know, you're really upset about this. It turns out we already took care of that problem. Like you're upset that we're throwing the garbage out on the street. Well, we're not throwing the garbage on the street. Actually, we have, you know, composting and we have recycling and we have this. You know, you give, help them understand that the things that they might be frustrated with um, has already been taken care of. Okay, we're almost done. Um, so what is style flexing? So style flexing, this is the only picture I could find. It's a dog that's dressed up as a lion, okay? So style flexing is this idea that you can create better interactions by adjusting your style. That's what we've been talking about, adjusting your behavior and adjusting your communications. And you can do that by asking a lot of questions, asking yourself a lot of questions, looking in the mirror and trying to figure out who you are, listening to other people and learning like what we're doing today maybe spending some quiet time either in prayer or meditation or reading to figure out who you are and who your colleagues are and the four steps to flexing or being more flexible is recognizing the other person's style adjusting the way you talk the way you communicate the content that you give and the way you deliver stuff and then looking and assessing how did things go and then readjusting okay that worked out pretty well i should do more of that uh that didn't work out very well maybe i should change the way i sent that email or maybe that person doesn't like emails that person is very relational they need a one-on-one -on -one talk um 
and you can uh, do things like all the stuff here that talk about how to be more versatile. So we already talked about this for the analyticals, but this is from the other side. First it was how do you help them, but the, for the beavers, they need help becoming more decisive. Okay, I have the data, now I'm gonna make a decision. Okay, they need to understand that getting total support, all the data that they want to be perfect, maybe that's just not possible. There's not enough time, there's not enough money, there's not enough data. Uh, maybe they need to be more open-minded because remember I said sometimes the analyticals are so data-driven that they become a little bit rigid. Maybe they need to be better about listening to others. They're not good listeners in general. The golden retriever, the puppy, the dolphin is a good listener. Think about feelings becoming more flexible. Basically, all of these things are learn to be what other people are so that you can be more well-rounded, like what you were talking about. You're, you know, you're very well-rounded. Uh, lions are not good listeners. They're good bossy people. They're good leaders. Um, they need to learn to listen more. They need to acknowledge that maybe other people have a point of view that's good. Being more patient, maybe being less intense. Uh, lions can be, they roar, right? So they might be very intense. Paying attention to other people's feelings. That's what the golden retrievers do naturally. Um, pay attention to others and be more gentle, okay? And then, if you look at the amiables, the amiables, like me, they have weaknesses too. They need, sometimes they're so afraid to have a confrontation, they won't make a decision. Or they won't say, I stand for this. Okay, they may need to take a position. Maybe they're oversensitive because they're so relational and empathetic. So maybe they need to get a thicker skin. Uh, maybe they need to take more risks in confronting people because if you're always deferring and going with a group, things don't work out very well. Um, and letting people know what they think. They're good listeners, but they don't, they're not good at saying, I believe this. Um, and learning to be more effective at confrontation. Um, expressives, sometimes they need to pull back some of their expression because they're too out bubbly, too intense. They need to talk less and listen more. Maybe they need to be better about looking at the facts and have more self-control, more moderation, thinking before they speak, being attentive to others. And sometimes they're such visionary dreamers that maybe they need to be more realistic, okay? Now, it sounds like I'm criticizing the, the expressives, but you know what? Our lives would be so boring if we had no expressives who dream, right? Our lives would be less decisive and less forward thinking if we had no lions. And so each of these four groups play a part into our overall success. So that was, uh, that's the content. Ooh, I made it at three o'clock. Uh, any questions or any comments that you guys have? Yes. Workplace violence. So the question is, what about workplace violence? You can get what? You can get fired for, after being at work two hours for saying the wrong thing. Right. Pushing somebody around. Right. And many people are. Right. So all these different personalities like the lion and stuff like mm -hmm. that, isn't it time that maybe they re rethought what they're doing? Sure, sure. You know, so, the, so you're talking about like, how do we make the workplace a safer place? Um, yeah. so, so I work at Kaiser Permanente. I can tell you like a lot of work has been done to reduce that. So usually people like me, the doctors are the top of the pyramid and the surgeons are the top of the doctors and you know things like that and in the when i was in medical school if a doctor lost their temper they would throw things if you throw a scalpel you're like bam a dart you know maybe in, and maybe that scalpel is already has blood on it so it's contaminated so that kind of stuff is not tolerated at all and in my department i say explicitly we're trying to create a department that where there's relational safety and respect. So if you're upset with me, 
you can express that you're upset, but you don't get to yell and throw things at me. And even though I'm the chief of the department, I don't get to do the same to you. I, you know, it, it has to be relational. And actually, groups, you know, studies clearly show that if you have a group that's trying to move forward together, you want the quieter people to be able to, to be respected and to say things, because they may be right, actually. And you don't want to bulldoze over them. Like, my way is the right way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push you around. Um, so that's so in medicine in general, and definitely at Kaiser Permanente, it's huge, huge amount of work is being done. Um, even ten years ago, my department ten years ago compared to now is completely different uh, because a lot of this stuff is stuff that I talk about in some fashion, like just I sort of slide it into what I'm talking about, um, and. I would say 90% of the bossy, inappropriately angry people are either gone, like there's the door, or you need to get your act together and we're gonna help you. We're gonna send you to classes, we're gonna get you a communication coach, we're gonna send you to, you know, like empathy classes to help you figure it out because what you're doing, doctor, is not appropriate and it actually makes other people not function well. And so you having an anger fit might make this doctor or this nurse not be able to take care of their patient because they're tense. Does that make sense? Well, you know, I work for a big company and you, you can offend somebody so easily that most people just basically keep their mouth shut and go to work, do their job, and mm -hmm. go home. Um, it's too easy to offend somebody. Oh, oh, you're talking about that side, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, yeah, that's a whole different problem. <laughs> I, I'm not sure, that's, that's, that's a different cultural problem that your company uh, needs to address because if everybody's staying silent at work, then, then where are the good ideas happening? And where are the, there's no way to correct things because nobody is willing or able to say we have a problem. Um, the, the, there were some stories before about how in certain airlines the pilot is in charge and it's a very top-down militaristic structure so you have a pilot, a co-pilot, a navigator. The pilot could be running the plane into a mountain but the culture is so strong that you don't offend the pilot that you don't say, excuse me, pilot, we're about to run into a, a, a mountain. We have a problem. Um, so that's, that's not, what you're describing is a very unhealthy culture. I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> sure. It's unhealthy, but what do you do about it? Uh, you're, you know, it's, it needs to come from your, uh, your corporate leadership. Sorry. Hi. Uh, I just wanted to know, like, uh, if there is an amiable personality type in the team, and how do we encourage them to voice disagreement? Because most of the time, I think they would be passive aggressive. They're not able to express if they disagree on something. So that becomes a challenge. So how do we encourage people to express? Is it? Yeah, if for an amiable type. Oh, for an analytical type. Uh, amiable. amiable. Oh, amiable. Oh, yeah. how do you help the amiables? So, if you're the manager of a bunch of amiables, you need to... They're good listeners, right? The, the golden retrievers are very good. Like, how do you feel? How do you feel? They're not very good until somebody says, Hi, Mr. Golden Retriever. I want, let's go have some coffee because I want to hear how you feel or where you think we can make things better or where our weaknesses are. So the, remember there was that square, which is tell, they, they tend to be good tellers. The lions are good tellers. The expresses are good tellers. The amiable is a very good listener. So you have to give them a very safe place where they can also tell. Otherwise, it's not their natural style. Um, so, so you have to bring them out and encourage them 
to tell. And somebody, you know, it's, you know, this is their personality. So it's just like somebody who has anger issues, they're not going to stop having anger issues if you tell them once. It has to be a long journey to change their personal style. Uh, the p person who's not good at sharing their feelings, also, it's, it can be a long journey of giving them safety and showing that you really are interested more than once. More than three times, you have to say, hey, I want to know how you feel and what do you think. Does that make sense? Yeah, but what if they're not uh, ready to open up or if they're feeling aggression, they're not expressing disagreements, like some tools to... Uh, yeah, so, so, so for you, so you, you're an analytical or what's... Analytical, yeah. You're an analytical. So the analytical... Uh, Analyticals in general, again, this is all very, this is all generalities. The um, analyticals in general, because they're so data driven and fact driven, are not good at being gentle communicators, right? Yeah. And so if you say to an amiable, tell me what you think, they're like, ah, <laughs> you know. So the, amy the analytical and the lion actually have to learn to communicate better, gentler, more gentle, more relationally, because that's the, the amiable tends to be more sensitive, oversensitive. I'm oversensitive. I'm a very sensitive boss. So, it, it, so in my world, I was put in a position where I'm supposed to be a lion, but my natural personality is a golden retriever. So I've had to learn to be more decisive, more direct, in my group, I think it's worked out well because basically I am gently being a lion. I'm gently helping people do what they're supposed to do. Um, if, the, if my organization said, you need to do it in two days and I have to start roaring, one, I would, I would not be very good at it. And two, I would probably have a you know, nervous breakdown because I, that's not my personal style. So, so that's the flexing part. The flexing part is learning to be what you're not. I actually think, to, you know, to go back to your question, I think the, uh, the stuff on the handout with like 16personalities.com and truity.com, they give you like 50 times more information than what I've given here. And they break it, so I've given you four personality types. They break it down to 16. And those personality types, you know, it's like a four, four, four square grid to a 16 square grid. And they give a lot of detail about your personality strengths, where you can improve, uh, who you should get, who you get along with, probably the best, who you don't like if you're thinking about dating, uh, it, who your coworkers are, what kind of job is good for you. Um, I think those websites probably give you my, I, think, I, I think some of my hesitation in putting out my thing is because I know that with four squares, it's, it's too broad. People, to, yeah, it's, it's, it's too broad. Yes, sir? Well, like a new job experience, people tend to behave, uh, to, tend to behave accordingly to the person, to the co-workers or co this that are the same, they are, they, like in, in Milgram experience. They, uh, you change your own style of behavior according to your environment of working, workers. Right. So. Right, so, so we tend to basically, we figure out like if the corporation we're working for is lion, 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 we want it to be decisive. I think, you know, that's fine. I think, you know, from a corporate leadership structure, it's if the, let's say the board of directors says, you know what, we're not doing as well as our competition. We need to make a change. Sometimes what they do is they start looking at the structure and they say, we have a lion structure. The lions are not listening to the data and they're not listening to the people on the front lines, how they feel. And the, the company, might say we need to fix that or another company might say we don't have enough lions in our culture we're not decisive enough we need to be decisive and move forward and move more quickly so yeah every every company has to figure out what the right balance is for them how long 
should that take? So the question was recognize the style of who you're talking to and how long it should take. It depends on you and it, it right like you know some people like the amiables the amiables are very interesting because I think the amiables are so wired into how do people feel that they get there very quickly. The lion by personality is thinking about where am I going to lead this group of 50 people. They're not really thinking about how people feel. Um, and, and so different personality groups are more sensitive to it. Um, lions make decisions very quickly. That's, that's their gift, right? And uh, so every, so, so your question is how long should it take? It sort of depends on who you are. Does, does a first impression tell you who the other? Uh, I think like a lot of this social style stuff is when you're working with people over time and you're gathering more data over time. Um, you, you've had a while with your wife, so you guys have figured each other out for a while. <laughs> yeah. question you said uh, uh, you mentioned uh, they having more detail can you give a reference to the uh, they that you're talking about? oh yeah it's on your blue sheet um, the there's a slide that talks about uh, there's three websites and then I think the half sheet has even more I think there was a hand up here any other here's one I notice a lot of the traits you show you're trying to divide up, and, but uh, I don't see them that way. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. There's so much of a uh, you know, transition between the different types. Right. Uh, so how do you address that? Because you, you're leading an organization, you know, a department. Uh, how do you deal with that or, or encourage them to recognize the different traits in different people? So you're, you're right. So this is like very simplistic. It's a four square model. It's so simplistic, right? Because you could have a lion who's very decisive, who happens to be a very good listener also. So it's very, it's very general. It's almost like a cartoon really, um, just to help us hang on to things. Um, I think you're right. Everybody is unique and people are growing hopefully too, that they may have not been that good of listeners in this period of time, but then they grew to learn to listen to people and become more sensitive to other people. Um, or vice, you know, like uh, somebody who's not very decisive has learned over time to say, okay, this is how I make a decision. I need this much facts, this much data, and then at some point I need to just deal with it and make a decision. So people grow and change over time. Uh, in answer to your question, it made me think about if you're managing a group and you recognize that they're all multiple personalities, outside of personality traits, maybe a first step is to get your group together and, and, and set some core values. Mm -hmm. How are we going to operate together right. as a group? Right. And that gives you some kind of a foundation from which to start. Right. So it, if one of your values is to listen fully mm -hmm. to each other mm -hmm. and understand, I think that would go a long way. Right. Yeah. We did um, this exercise that's used a little bit of tech where we asked in a meeting like this, we asked people to just start typing in words and then the words went on the screen and then, you know, the, the bigger, the, you know, the more votes the word got, the, the bigger the word got. Um, a lot of conversations. And then I, as the leader, started using language that steered toward a different, a specific direction. So those slides that I used all for one, one for all, I had a group where people were fighting between each other and they had created many factions and silos. So it took many years to say all for one, one for all, right? Out of many, I can't say the Latin, but out of many, one. You know, we're better together than we are apart. It's we as a group over me as a person. It, I, used, I, I threw this stuff out so much that it made them throw up at the end. But what was interesting, and actually I, I wasn't really sure if it was gonna work, 
years later, they are that way, except for maybe 10%, maybe 5%. And it's so cohesive now, which allows us to give better patient care. It's so cohesive now that they have actually lost all memory of when it was bad, which is incredible to me. Uh, it means I get zero credit for any of it, but it's an incredible journey that it's so cohesive that they're, I think they've, they've deleted it out of their minds. And it's, it's a good thing. It, it, it really is a good thing, but it took years to do that. Did you, oh. She's an expressive. <laughs> I just wanted to say something about the maybe a violent um, environment that y you said you were working under. I think that um, what this personality thing can be helpful is you understanding what your boss is like or who would understanding the coworker that's irritating you or so understanding them better and then also knowing yourself too like what makes you sensitive or what what makes you upset and stuff so when you understand yourself and you understand your um uh co-workers specific people that are, you have to work under or with you can then be a little bit more pro you that gives you tools rather than feeling helpless about this negative culture you know where you can just think this is terrible this is terrible and that's very depressing but then if you as one person can influence even yourself having a better attitude at work or the coworker or understanding and you know showing compassion or grace or you one person can change the small environment and maybe that's all that it is or maybe the, your company has to go under or have to almost declare bankruptcy before they're going to call in a consultant and say this lion top-down thing doesn't work you know and you may not be part be able to see it but you can still play your part in you know as long as you're there you can have a good impact that's all I wanted to say Okay. Hey, thank you so much for uh, spending some time with me. There's another talk that um, I give, and it's more personal than this because it's more specifically about um, parenting and supporting our teenagers through this very stressful time and stressful area. And a lot of it is for parents to try and understand their kids. And, you know, the theme of that is loving our kids in a um, healthy way instead of putting so much pressure on them that they feel like every failure is literally a life and death thing because we know that, that some of our teenagers have made you know really tragic choices about suicide or near suicide so that talk is uh, has a lot more amiable in it and hands-on parenting stuff um, so Anyways, I'll, I'll be around if anybody wants to talk. Thank you so much for uh, spending your afternoon with me, and I hope you have a good day.